Mr Hunter. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Very sadly, the most common source of complaint to my busy electorate office uh, is the National Disability uh, Insurance Scheme. People with disability, their carers, their families, their loved ones are uh, usually at their wits' end before they come to us because these are typically self-sufficient people who don't really want to come to their Member of Parliament but are forced to do so out of sheer frustration and, and their inability to get the service and care and equipment they need uh, for their loved one or indeed for themselves. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, I, I get it. I think more than 600,000 Australians are attempting or making the transition from the old system to the National Disability Insurance Scheme. It's a big exercise. And there were always going to be challenges, including teething problems. But we could never have feared that the system could let people down uh, so badly. And like our Centrelink staff, who are also under-resourced, NDIA uh, NDIA staff are copying much of the brunt of people's uh, frustration, and they shouldn't be. I have the highest regard for the agency staff. They are doing their best in very difficult circumstances, circumstances driven in large part by the cap, uh, staffing cap this government has placed uh, on the agency. They're doing a, trying to do a very difficult and challenging task in the most challenging uh, of circumstances. Now, I shouldn't be surprised that so many people are coming to my office because something like uh, 77,000 less people have made their way to the NDIS than should have been the case. And that's a lot of people, and obviously, each and every member of 150 members of the House of Representatives have their share of those 77,000 people. So you can imagine, Madam Deputy Speaker, how distressed those people and families were to learn on Tuesday night that the Prime Minister built his wafer-thin budget surplus in part off the back of their pain, funded his surplus by underspending on the NDIS. Now, the Treasurer and the Prime Minister say, but it's demand-driven. Yes, it is. And 77,000 people aren't placing a demand on the system because they can't get into the system. What an outrageous thing for a government to do. Does it have no conscience or heart or care for these people? Very, very disappointing, Madam Deputy Speaker. Now, as an opposition, we don't pretend this mess is going to be easy to fix. So we've got to be careful about expectations management as well, because what we will inherit will be somewhat of a train wreck. But we do make this commitment, Madam Deputy Speaker. We will remove that cap, and that in itself will make a big difference and we will work as hard as we can for these people to fix their problems. We will make this an absolute priority for a shortened Labor government. And why shouldn't it be a priority, Madam Deputy Speaker? Surely there's no greater responsibility than for us to take care of those less advantaged than what we are. Certainly there's no, more group, of, no group of people in our community more worthy of support than those who are finding themselves frustrated by the national disability insurance uh, scheme. I, rec I, I remind people, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the budget surplus built in part around $7 billion is not that much more in federal government budget terms. You've got to be careful suggesting a billion dollars is not a lot of money. Of course it is. But, but in federal government budget terms, not that much more than this government is spending giving cash rebates on dividend invitation for people in this country uh, who don't pay tax and of course, 80 per cent of that money is going to 20 per cent of the highest income earners in this country. Now, where are the government's priorities, Madam Deputy Speaker? Are we that concerned about people getting a tax rebate when they don't pay tax? Or are we more concerned about people in this country and their carers and their families and, of course, even their service providers who are as frustrated as those with disability themselves? where our priorities. Our priorities should be with those with a disability and all those other people with, uh, suffering disadvantage uh, in our communities, including, of course, those on Newstart. Those on that side like to demonise people on Newstart as if it's somehow always their fault. And sure, there are people who could try harder, 
but there are more people who, for whatever reason, through no fault of their own, have struggled to get work in this country. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. And I call the member for